Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution. So, if you met Charles Darwin, you probably wouldn't have guessed that his idea would change the way he looked at the world. Charles Darwin was born in England on February 12, 1809, the same day as Abraham Lincoln. He grew up at a time when the scientific view of natural world was shifting dramatically. Geologists were suggesting that Earth was ancient and had changed over time. Biologists were suggesting that life on Earth had also changed. The process of change over time is called evolution. Darwin developed a scientific theory of biological evolution that explains how modern organisms evolved over long periods of time throughout distance from common ancestors. His journey began in 1831 when he was invited to sail on the HMS Beagle's five year voyage along the route shown in the picture below. Species vary globally. Darwin's noticed that yet yeah, ecologically similar animal species inhabited separated, but ecologically similar habitats around the globe. Species vary locally. Darwin's noticed that different yet yeah, related animal species often occupy different habitats within a local area. Species vary over time. In addition to collecting specimens of a living species, Darwin also collected fossils which scientists already knew to be the preserved remains of trace of ancient organisms. Darwin noticed that some fossils of extinct animals were similar to a living species. All scientists are influenced by the work of other scientists, and Darwin was no exception. The Bagel's voyage came during one of the most exciting periods in the history of science. Geologists studying the structure and history of Earth we're making new observations about the forces that shape our planet. What did Huden and Lyell concluded about Earth history? Well, Huden and Lyell concluded that Earth is extremely old and that the process that changed Earth in the past are the same process that operate in the present. Huden recognized the connection between the, a number of geological processes and the geological features like mountains, valleys, and layers of rock that seem to be bent or folded. What was Malthus' view of population growth? In 1798, English economist Thomas Malthus noted that humans were born faster than people were dying, causing overcrowding. Malthus reasoned that if the human population grew unchecked, there wouldn't be enough living space and food for everyone. The forces that work against population growth, Malthus suggested, included war, famine, and disease. Darwin realized that Malthus' reasoning applied even more to other organisms than it did to humans. A maple tree can produce thousands of seeds each summer. One, one oyster can produce millions of eggs each year. If all the descendants of almost any species survive for several generations, they would be overrun the world. Obviously this doesn't happen. Most of spring die before reaching maturity and one of few of those that survive managed to produce. But why was this relation so important? Darwin had became convinced that species evolved but he needed a mechanism, a scientific explanation based on natural process to explain how and why evolution occurred. When Darwin realized that most organisms don't survive and reproduce, he wondered which individuals survive and why. Now we're going to see Lamarck's evolutionary hypothesis. So how did Lamarck propose the species evolve? The French naturalist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck proposed two of the first hypotheses. Lamar suggested that organisms could change during their lifetimes by selectively using or not using various parts of their bodies. He also suggested that individuals could pass these acquired traits onto their offsprings, enabling species to change over time. Lyell's Principles of Geology Lyell argued that laws of nature are constant over time and that scientists must explain past events in terms of process they can observe in the present. This way of thinking called uniformitism holds that geological process we see in action today 
must be the same ones who shaped our earth millions of years ago. Artificial Selection To find an explanation for change in nature, Darwin studied change produced by plant and animal breeders. Those breeders knew individuals' organisms vary. Farmers would select for breeding only trees that produced the largest fruits or cows that produced the most milk. However, over time, this selective breeding would produce more trees with even bigger fruits and cows that gave even more milk. Darwin called this processed artificial selection. In artificial selection, nature provides the variation and humans select those they find useful. In 1858, Darwin reviewed an essay by Arthur Russell Wallace, an English naturalist working in Malaysia. Wallace's thoughts about evolution were almost identical to Darwin's. Not warning to get scooped, Darwin decided to move forward with his own work. Wallace's essay was presented together with some of Darwin's observations at scientific meetings in 1858. Variation and Adaptation Here's where individual variation plays a vital role. Darwin knew that individuals have natural variations among their heritable traits. He hypothesized that some of those variants are better suited to life Any in their environment than others. that increases an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in its environment is called an adaptation. Survival of the fittest Darwin, like Lamarck, recognized that there must be a connection between the way an organism makes a living and the environment in which it lives. According to Darwin, differences in adaptations affect an individual's fitness. Darwin named his mechanisms for evolution natural selection because of its similarity to artificial selection. Natural selection occurs in any situation in which more individuals are born than can survive. There is natural heritage variation and there is variable fitness among individuals. What does Darwin's mechanisms for evolution suggest about living in six species? Darwin proposed that over many generations adaptation could cause successful species to evolve into new species. He also proposed that living species are descendant into new species. He also proposed that living species are descendant with modification from common ancestor, an idea called descent with modification. According to the principal common descent, all species living and extinct are descended from ancient common ancestors. Darwin's theory depended on assumptions that involve many scientific fields. Scientists in some fields, including geology, physics, paleontology, chemistry, and embryology, did not have the technology or understanding to test Darwin's assumptions during his lifetime. Darwin recognized the importance of patterns in the distribution of life, the subject of the field called biogeography. Patterns in the distribution of living and fossils species tell us how modern organisms evolved from their ancestors. Darwin also struggled with what he called the imperfection of the geological record. Darwin's study of fossils have convinced him and other scientists that life evolved. Many recently discovered fossils from series that trace the evolution of modern species from extinct ancestor. Darwin proposed that animals with similar structures evolved from a common ancestor with a basic version of the structure. Structures that are shared by related species and have been inherited from a common ancestor are called homologous structures. Evolutionary theory explains the existence of homologous structures adapted to a different purpose as the result of descent with modification from a common ancestor. Body parts that share a common functions but not structures are called homologous structures. Not all homologous structures have important functions. Vegetable structures are inherited from ancestors but have lost much or all of their original functions due to the different selection pressures acting on the descendant. Similar patterns of embryological 
development provide further evidence that organism has descended from a common ancestor. Genetics and Molecular Biology The most troublesome missing information for Darwin had to do with heredity. Darwin had no idea how heredity worked and he was deeply worried that this lack of knowledge might prove fatal to his theory. At the molecular level, the universal genetic code and homologous molecules provide evidence of common descent. Darwin noted that several finch species have breaks of very different size and shape. Each species uses its break like a specialized tool to, to pick up and handle its food. Darwin proposed that natural selection had shaped the beaks of different bird populations as they became adaptive to eat different foods. That was reasonable hypothesis. But was there any way to test it? No one thought there was a way until Peter and Rosemary Grant of Princeton University came along. The Grants have spent more than 35 years studying Galapagos finches. They realized that Darwin's hypothesis rested on two testable assumptions. First, for break size and shape to evolve, there must be enough heritable variation on those traits to provide raw material for natural selection. Second, Difference in bake size and shape must produce different fitness. The grants have documented that natural selection takes place in wild finch populations frequently and sometimes rapidly. The grants work shows that variation within species increases the like like wood of the species, adapting to and surviving environmental change. Like any scientific theory, Evolutionary theory is constantly reviewed as new data are gathered. Researchers still debate important questions such as precisely how new species arise and why species become extinct. Darwin developed his theory of natural selection without knowing how heritage worked. Mendel's studies on inheritance in peas were published during Darwin's lifetime, but no one, including Darwin, realized how important that work was. After Mendel's work was discovered around 109,000 genetics took off like a rocket. Researchers discovered that heritable traits are controlled by genes that are carried on chromosomes. They learned how changes in genes and chromosome genetic variation. An organism genotype is the particular combination of alleles it carries. An individual's genotype together with environmental conditions produces its penotype. Penotype includes all physically, physiologically, and behaviorally characteristic of an organism such as eye color or height. Genetic variation and evolution are both studies in population. A population is a group of individuals of the same species that may produce offspring. A gene pool consists of all the genes including all the different alleles of each gene that are presented in a population. Researchers study gene pools by examining the numbers of different alleles they contain. Alleles frequency is the number of times an allele occurs in a gene pool, compared to the total number of alleles in that pool for the same gene. Evolution in genetic terms involves a change in the frequency of alleles in a population over time. What are the sources of genetic variation? Three sources of genetic variation are mutation, genetic recombination during sexual reproduction, and lateral gene transfer. A mutation is any change in the genetic material of a cell. Some mutations involve changes within individual genes. Other mutations involve changes in larger species of chromosomes. Crossing over is another way in which genes are recombinated. Recall that crossing over occurs during many cells. In this process, pair chromosomes often swap lengths of DNA at random. Crossing over further increases the number of new genotypes created in each generation. Some organisms, however, pass genes from one individual to another, or even from individuals of one species to another. The number of phenotypes produced of a trait depends on how many genes control the trait. In the species of snails shown, shown below, 
Below, some snails have dark bands in their shells, and other snails don't. The presence of absence of dark bands is single gen trait. Polygenic traits. While many traits are controlled by two or more genes that are called polygenic traits, each gene of polygenic traits has, a, has two or more alleles. How does natural selection affect single gene and polygenic traits? Pesticide resistant insects have kind of fitness that protects them from a harmful chemical. In genetic terms, what does fitness mean? Each time an organism reproduces, it passes copies of its genes onto its offspring. Natural selection on single gene traits can lead to change in allele frequency and thus to change in phenotype frequencies. Natural selection on polygenic traits can affect the relative fitness or phenotypes and therapy produce one of the three types of selection, directional selection, stabilizing selection, and disruptive selection. When individuals at one end of the curve have higher fitness than individuals in the middle or at the end, directional selection occurs. And when individuals near the center of the curve have higher fitness than individuals at either end, Stabilizing selections takes place. And for the last one, when individuals at the outer ends of the curve have higher fitness than individuals near the middle of the curve, disruptive selection occurs. What is genetic drift? Natural selections is not the only source of evolutionary change. In small populations, an allele can become more or less common simply by change, by chance. In small populations, individuals that carry a particular allele might leave more descendants than other individuals leave, just by chance. Over time, a series of change occurrences can cause an allele to become more or less common in a population. This kind of random change in allele frequency is called genetic drift. Sometimes, a disaster such as disease can kill many individuals in a population. Just by chance, the smaller population genes pool might have allele frequency that are different from those of the original gene pool. If the reduced population later grows, its alleles will be different in frequencies from the original population. The bottleneck effect is a change in allele frequency following a dramatic reduction in the size of a population. Genetic drift might also occur when a few individuals colonize a new habitat. This founding individuals might carry alleles that differ in relative frequencies from those of the main population just by chance. The new gene pool might therefore start out without alleles frequency different from those of the parent gene pool. This situation in which alleles frequency change as a, as a result of the migration of a small subgroup of a population is known as the founder effect. What conditions are required to maintain genetic equilibrium? If a population is not evolving, allele frequency and its genes pool do not change, which means that the population is in genetic equilibrium. The Hardy-Weinberg principle states that allele frequency in a population should remain constant unless one or more factors cause those frequency to change. The Hardy-Weinberg principle predicts that five conditions can disturb genetic equilibrium and cause evolution to occur. Non-random mating, small population size, immigration or emigration, mutations or natural selection. With the non-random mating, in genetic equilibrium, individuals must mate with other individuals at random. But in many species, individuals select mates based on heritable trait, such as size, strength or coloration a practice known as sexual selection. What types of isolations lead to the formation of new species? Biologists define a species as a population or group of populations whose members can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Given this genetic definition of species, what must happen for one species to divide or give rise to a new species? The, inf the formation of a new species is called speciation. When populations become reproductively isolated, they can evolve into two separate species. Reproductive isolations can develop in a variety of ways, including behavioral isolation, geographic isolation, and temporal isolation. 
What is the current hypothesis about Gallopalo's finch speciation? Many of the characteristics appeared in the in bell shaped distribution typical of polygenic traits. As environmental condition change, the grants documented directional selection among the traits. When Throt struck the island of Death and Major, Finches were larger bakes capable of cracking the thickest seeds, survived and reproduced more often than others. Over many generations, the proportion of large beaked finches increased. We can now combine these studies by the grants with evolutionary concepts to form a hypothesis that answers the questions. How might the founder effect in natural selection have produced pr reproductive Isolation that could have led to speciation among Gallopalo's finches. Well, according to this hypothesis, speciation in Gallopalo's finches occur by founding of a new population. Geographic isolation changes in the new population genes pool, behaviorally isolation, and ecological competition.